Okay, so we're asked to evaluate this definite integral, and it's a definite integral because they give us the limits of integration. So this integration lends itself to the power rule. It's pretty complicated. We've got a high power, but if we let u equal 3x squared minus 2, then du is going to be 6x. So we want to change it to make it simpler. We want to change it to be in terms of u. Um, but that means we need to have both these pieces. We need to have a 6x in there as well as the 3x squared minus 2. We've got this part substituted. We almost have 6x. We just need this negative 3 to be a positive 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and multiply that by negative 2, but at a cost of multiplying the outside at negative 1 half. That way, the negative 1 half and the negative 2 cancel brings us right back to where we began. But now I can make my substitution because this is... 6x, 3x squared minus 2 to the fourth. So we can plug in uh, du for 6x. And we can plug in u here. So it's a much simpler integral. Usually du comes second, though, so let's just rewrite that. Usually comes at the end. Okay, so now we just need to evaluate the antiderivative. So that's, the power goes up, so that's u to the fifth over five. Then the limits of integration is negative one to zero. So before I evaluate the limits of integration, one last simplification step, multiplying that negative one half. And so to evaluate limits of integration, we plug in the, t oh, sorry, but this is, sorry, this, I shouldn't have written this. This is with respect to x, right? So that's not, the, the 0 to negative 1 was back when it was with respect to x. So the limits of integration changed. And the easiest way to handle that is to go ahead and find the antiderivative, but then substitute x back in there. So just don't make the same mistake I did. I got a little lazy there. Integral from negative 1 to 0 was gone once I changed to u. Okay, That was 0 to negative 1 for x. Now we don't know what it is with u. You could figure it out. It would take a little bit of extra finagling, but you can bypass all that because down here in your antiderivative, you can turn it back into terms of x. It's 3x squared minus 2. Okay, now it's back in terms of x, so now you can put that negative 1 and 0. Okay, So that's just me being a math teacher, being picky about the notation. If you just kept carrying down that, that notation that I scribbled out, you'd still be okay. But properly, it shouldn't be there because now it's in terms of u, different variable. These were originally in terms of x. So, Okay, so now we evaluate the, this definite derivative, a uh, definite antiderivative by, uh, sorry, now we evaluate this definite integral by plugging in u. Then subtract what happens when we plug. I said plugging in u. I don't know why none of my words are coming out right. Plugging in 0 and then subtract what happens when you plug in negative 1. Okay, so this term up here, 0 squared is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And subtracting a negative, that's plus. So Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 to the 5th is 1. So this is negative. Oh, sorry, but it's we said minus negative, so we took care of that minus sign. So this is a 1 over 10. And negative 2 to the 5th, that's 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 32. That's negative, negative 32. So that's a positive 32 over 10. So that's 33 over 10.